Ezekiel chapter 16, and then we'll read verse 15. There is one sin that is very serious among the church that we take very seriously. I want you all to mark this down. This has been a powerful stain upon the church. It's the sin of fornication. I want you all to learn this lesson. This is going to be extremely serious. And also, if there's something that you're doing in the church that may attribute and lead to this sin, it is very important that you self-reflect and that you change your attitude, your conversation, your dressing. Yeah, it's dressing too, and everything. Amen. So this is very important because this is a sin that has done the biggest stain among churches. you got to realize that. So I'm going to give you a lot of verses on this one, but I wasted so much time on conspiracy. So... So this is going to be, we're going to go through a lot of verses right here, which is going to be interesting. For, notice what is very interesting, what is tied to something as, as a sexual sin is first your dressing. Your dressing. And that will be found at Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 15 through 16. The Bible says right here, But thou didst trust in thine own what? Beauty. And plates the harlot because of thy renown, and pourest out thy fornications on everyone that passed by. So everyone who's around this person is affected by her sensual or sexual atmosphere. Why? Because of her appearance. You see that? Look at verse 16. And of thy garments thou didst take, and deckest thy high places with divers colors, and plates the harlot thereupon, the like things shall not come, neither shall it be so. You see how the Bible ties a sexual sin to a sexual atmosphere to your dressing? This is why we take dressing very seriously in this church. Now, my parents told me this. They told me that the number one thing they ever had a problem in the church that they kept, that they had to repeat, which was uh, tiresome, which I didn't understand until I became a pastor, was dressing. And my mom told me this. My mom told me women are really bad at that one. Now, if you don't believe me, Ezekiel 16, was it a male gender or a female gender? Mm. All right. So you women got to watch out how you dress. So you cannot dress inappropriately. Now, what I'm kind of sick and tired is that these people will just keep uh, explaining about, oh, why is that inappropriate? Why is that inappropriate? But you never say that whenever you go, whenever you work in a job that requires you to dress like this. Why? Because they know it attracts sexual allure, but you, knew that, you know that more than they do. Okay? So you got to realize this. That's why we do not believe that skirts should go above the knee, ladies. Because the Bible says that if the skirt is above the knee, then that is nakedness. That's what the Bible says. That's why you women got to be careful how you're wearing tight dressing. What, you got to use your head, okay? You women are more critical thinking than we are. Right. So don't make excuses because you know more than we do because you think more than we men. <laughs> you women know why, why did you dress that to begin with? Just ask yourself that question. Amen. Why did you wear that body tight dressing? Why did, you have, uh, why did you wear a dressing that showed a little bit of cleavage? Why do you have to, so you, why do you dress that way where it shows a little bit of more of the leg? So you got to, I mean, come on. You know why more than we do, okay? You women sometimes are smarter than us men. <laughs> so you know better than we do. I don't like it when I have to explain myself on that one. So that's why you women, when you're dressed up in church, you better watch your dressing. You better watch your dressing. All right, a second thing right here that can contribute to the sin of fornication is, is touching. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Notice that it's considered a sin when you have an intimate touch. Intimate touch. That's why some Bible believers don't believe in hugging women sometimes. So I've started to, uh, you, sometimes you'll notice me doing that, where I'm kind of a little bit refraining. I'll only do it when I have to, but I kind of refrain myself from doing that. You'll notice that. 
Why? Because intimately touching is inappropriate. That's why when you're dating, we don't believe in kissing. We believe in kissing until marriage. We don't believe in any form of inappropriate touching. Uh, excuse me, intimate, intimate touching. That's what 1 Corinthians 7 1 shows. Why? Because all of that love is reserved for marriage. You might say, why is that, Pastor? This is why we don't believe opposite, uh, opposite sexes should live, should live together. So if you're a male or a female who's uh, dating someone and you're living at the same place, you got to separate. This church, even this church, do not tolerate that. If we find out, then we're going to have to tell you and you have to separate. Now, you might say, why is that, Pastor? The reason why is this. The reason why is when you're living to, okay, one, when you're living together, there's something going on. Number two, number two, temptation is really, really open in the privacy of your home. And don't tell me you did more than just intimately touching. You may not have fornicated, but you did something more. Number three, another thing concerning about why we believe that you got to separate is this. You're already living like a husband and a wife already. And then if it comes out where the relationship is not man and wife, it's not successful, the separation is even harder. Why do you think the Bible says marriage is body joined to body? It's marriage. Because you truly feel like you're one with them. And when you're living together and you're close, you're getting closer to that marriage where it's oneness. And when they separate, God don't like that. That's why God hates divorce, unless, it's, uh, unless there's three exceptions, which I won't tell in this video. But that's why God hates divorce. Because why? When, when you're combined one with the person, he wants it to remain that way forever. That's true love. That's pure love. You know what kind of love we have? Let's all admit it. Everyone, nearly everybody doesn't understand true love today. Why do you think America, come on, use your head. If you think that I'm being too strict about this living together thing, why do you think America has more than half of divorces? Yeah, come on, preach. Now use your head. Mm -hmm. Because you all just want to touch. You want to feel. Yeah. You don't want to have a genuine love relationship. Mm -hmm. Genuine love relationship should equal touch. Not... Not separated. Mm -hmm. That's All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. If some of you have committed that sin, that should be confessed, actually. You should repent and confess that. You might say, why is that, preacher? Because fornication is the stain that we take very seriously in church. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to what? Touch a woman. And it's, see, notice it's intimate right here. It's intimate. So God does not want an intimate touch. Let's look at Matthew. Uh, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. Now, one thing you got to understand is this, is that we are not the legalistic police since you're grown adults. So it's okay for a person to show interest and build a closer relationship. There's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, you want to do that to see if the person is right for you. But you got to realize this, is that when it comes to intimate touching, that's got to be, you got to put a reservation for that. You can build up a closer relationship. You can show interest to the person. But intimate touching, you got to keep yourself restricted at the same time. To never have that as a restriction while you're getting closer to a person is building, is giving no limitation, no restriction when you get closer and closer to a relationship. Do you understand that? You have to put restrictions, yeah. see? See, we're not going to say, you know, not do this, not do that in every single detail. Not every single detail. Some of them is play, kissing, living together, etc. But every single act and action, we're not your legalist, we're not your legalistic policeman. Somebody flirts with another person, we're not gonna be a legalistic policeman and stuff like that. Brother and sister are hugging Christ. We're not the legalistic police and say, get out of there. You know, we're not we're not all that kind of stuff. Where a guy hangs out with the girl if they are past, if they are grown adults late at night, we're not the legalistic police that will trace every effort on you. Okay, we are not the legalistic policemen. But you do have to have a restriction. If you have this restriction, intimate touching, it will help you more on abstract areas of your relationship. See, if you have zero of this as your restriction, then there, you, you've actually put no restriction when you're having a connection and relationship with somebody. 
We're also going to look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications. Is that what the verse said? Okay, so notice in Matthew 15, 19, people know that you have some sort of sexual attraction. Okay, now remember that. That's why it's going to change your conversation, how you react to the person, and when you're alone with them. Look, here's something to understand. You can't hide this from people. Do you understand that? You might say, why are you saying that? Because that verse is out of the heart, proceed. Mm -hmm. We know what's in your heart, because, and people will see it. So that's why you got to realize this. What will so-and-so think of me when I do this with another person? Now, you think and pray about that. Here's an easier example. What do you think your wife would think when you react that way to the opposite sex? Now, that, if you're going to make up excuses, oh, there was nothing going on, all you have to do is get married and think what your spouse would think. And then you're going to realize, huh, there is restrictions. You're, if you say, oh, I don't believe you, wait till somebody treats that way with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend. They're just doing the same thing you did. So be very careful. Sexual attraction shows. Do you understand that? Shows. Watch your attitude now. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be flirtatious if I were you because it might show something where there's something sexual within you. And if we were to ask your history, when's the last time you fornicated, how many you fornicated with, what would your answer be? Oh, Pastor, I'm not, uh, I'm, why do you call that flirting? Well, if I were to ask your bio, hmm. Okay, now let's look at another one right here. Okay, yeah, so, okay, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm stepping on toes. This is good. I'm doing, I'm doing my job. I'm doing my job. I didn't come here for you to come to my church. I came here because I care about you Amen. doing what's right. Amen. Thank you. All right. Let's look at number four. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. That is, uh, I'm not going to read it, but that verse says you are to separate from fornicators. So you know what the sin is we kick out of church? Fornication. If you committed the sin of fornication, we kick you out of church. That is the sin. Whoa. Wow, Pastor. Yep, that's right. Now, again, here's the thing. Let me stress this again. What you've got to understand is, like I mentioned before, is that... Uh, excuse me. Oh. All right. So... Uh, Concerning fornication, when, we, when there is plain evidence of fornication going on in the church, we separate that, we kick that out. Other things that lead to fornication. So notice it's fornication, the, the verse says, all right? It's not things leading to it. Fornication itself is kicked out of church. Anything else that would lead to it, we are not your legalistic police guard concerning that matter. It would only depend on the situation and concerning the brethren and the testimony of the church etc. Because we're not going to get on every woman who comes in with a miniskirt in our church. We're not going to kick you out the first day. We're not going to get on everybody's case right here. So you got to realize this. We're not a legalistic policeman. But this does not mean that we don't preach against it. We do preach against it. And trust me, when God the Holy Spirit is moving in the church and in the sermon, the person is going to make a change one way or in another. So you got to realize that fact. So concerning about fornication, we kick that out. Everything else, that's your business between you and God, like your other sins that we can't police guard everything in your life. We can't police guard what you watch on television, what you have in the house, and the, what you have in your backup file, and the music you listen to. That's between you and God. We're not your legalistic police guard. What we are is that we welcome everybody in this church. We love you like a brother and sister in Christ. And unless there's a plain sin that the Bible says you have to kick out, that's when we put our foot down. Yeah, amen. Okay, so this is a sin you should take seriously. 
Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. This should be sobering. Ephesians 5, 3. You know what's the sin that ruins the testimony of the church? It's fornication. Do you know what's the number one thing that you find with pastors? Where's the problem? It, yeah. It's not money. It is not money. It is not power. You know what it is? Sex. It's sex. It's fornication. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. Look at King David. Right? What was his weak point? Sex. Solomon, richest man, wisest man in the world. What was his weak point? Sex. Ephesians 5, 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not once named among you as become a saint. That's why you hear Jack, one of Jack Hiles' schools and in his churches, and even accusations against Jack Hiles about sexual allegations. Jack Scott was proven for his sexual misconduct. I mean, he was in prison 10, 20 years or something like that with a minor. And he was the top 14 largest churches in America, and he was independent, fundamental, Baptist, King James only. See this? This is a sin we take seriously. This is a sin that ruins the testimony of the church, is sex. Let's also look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 through 17, and then Revelation chapter 2, and then I've got to call it a night. I'm over the time. Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, and Revelation chapter 2. Let me try to do this swiftly, but carefully, because this is a, an important subject. Hebrews chapter 12 and Revelation chapter 2. All right, this is a sermon right here, Hebrews 12, a lot of sermons right here. In Hebrews chapter 12, notice what the Bible says at verse 15, verse 15, excuse me. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be what? Defiled. There is something tragic or hard or you're struggling in your life that will make you defile yourself with what? It's fornication. 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person. You know what? how Satan attacks you with this sin or any sin that leads to fornication? It's when you're struggling. It's when you have bitterness towards somebody. It's when there's a controversy in the church. It's when you're going through your own trial and affliction. When you feel God is unfair to you, that void is filled in by you want love in return. So that's why it will lead to things that will lead to fornication and eventually fornication itself. That's why it's very sad. You see a lot of these prostitutes or even uh, these porn stars right there. They end up in that industry because they did not gain enough love. Serious, right? So if you are going through a certain struggle in this church, that's when you have to put double guard on. Do you, did you hear what I just said? You got to put a double guard on when you're around men or when you're around women, when you're going through a hard time. Remember that. Okay, another thing right here is Revelation. Oh, no, 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 no. We got to keep reading. This is a good sermon right here. Notice in verse 16, as Esau, who for what? One morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. You know what this thing is also fornication? It's, it's a relief that you want right now. That's what fornication is. It's a relief that you want right now. And guess what? That, that ruins your permanent blessing. You get kicked out of the church just because of one night, huh? Hmm. See? But here's another more sobering thing. Keep reading. This is even more scary. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Shh. You can cry all you want and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But some damages cannot be repaired. You think Jack Scott can say, I'm sorry at court? It's done. This church is ruined. It's gone. Watch out for the sin, folks. Okay, Revelation 2.20. Let me finish up right here. All right, you want me to open up altar call, amen? All right, Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. Revelation 2.20. We take this seriously. 
You know why? Because the Bible says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. See, you allow, you tolerated Jezebel. Notice what? It's sexual, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. You know why I'm teaching this subject? Because I am not going to be this church that is going to tolerate things that will lead to fornication. And you know what churches are doing right now? They tolerate this. That's why they get so many people dressed inappropriately in church. So many people living together, shacking together, and they're attending the same church for years. So many people who went through divorce who are attending those churches. All right, so consider that in thought. So when the preacher gets on you about, you know, intimately touching, dressing inappropriately, and then how you act, and then stuff like this, don't get all, don't get all tender and sensitive now because how would your husband, your wife feel when you treated that way toward the opposite sex? Yeah, now, if you think... If you take that seriously with, with your lover, what about the one who you should love the most, God Almighty? What do you think he thinks? All right. Now, don't whine and complain when pastor starts to preach or says something like, we're not doing this, we're not doing that, and stuff like that. If you want to call me legalistic police, fine. That's up to you. I don't tolerate it. Revelation 2. I'm not going to be that kind of church. Amen.